So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a Knight of the Dead um, dedicated server to run on your <clears throat> spare computer or laptop at home so your family can play together or friends or whichever. Um, what I won't be showing you is how to forward the ports through the router. You'll have to um, figure that out for yourself because each router and internet connection is different. So I could show you one way and it's probably different for you. But anyway, the first thing we need to do is download um, Steam CMD, and I'll put the link in the description so you can just click on it and you can do it. So once you've um, googled it or clicked on it, you'll come to this page and you want to click down here where it says Windows, downloading Steam CMD under Windows. And then if you're like me, you'll probably spend about five minutes trying to look for the download link. It's actually right here, you know looking for that download icon or whatever it is. So we'll line that down and um, we'll go to where it downloaded. And you want to open the zip file or WinRAR file or Windows zip thing that's already installed on Windows. Um, we want to create a folder and we'll call this folder Steam or whatever you want to call it. And what I want to do is drag steamcmd.exe into this folder. I'm sorry, I'm whistling a little bit. I've just had one of my teeth out and my mouth is not used to it yet. Mm -hmm. um, and then what we want to do is open this. And then we want to run this to get um, steamcmd to um, install all the files that it needs so we can install the server. So this should take like two seconds or more. This is very fine. Right, it's done. So first thing we need to do is we need to log in Anominus. I can't even say that word with this tooth. And I shall copy and paste that in there. Press enter. And it'll log you in just like you logged in on your Steam account. Except from this is a free way so you don't have to use your um, account whatsoever. So the first thing we need is um, we need to type app update and then the app ID. So we need to go and Google and search for Night of the Dead dedicated server um, Steam app ID. And as you can see, there's an app ID there. I'll put it in um, the description anyway, so you can just copy and paste it. And as you can see, I've already got it here. I'm going to line these down and we'll line you down because we'll need you in a second and then we'll paste that in here and then that will be downloading <coughs> all the server files for um, what game we're doing, Night of the Dead. Now I'm doing this on the fly so um, the last time I actually installed this was when it first came out so there may be mine to be updates. Um, so we'll check out the file system and what you can change and stuff like that. So what it's going to do is it's going to download all the files needed. Um, it will put them in a Steam apps and it will put them in temp until it's all downloaded. Because you can go in here, you can see the folder, but there's no files in there yet because it's not complete. So we'll start from the beginning so you don't get lost. And we're at 65%. So I think um, Night of the Dead requires something like an i5 with about 8 gig of RAM. So an old i5 laptop with 8 gig of RAM will do it. You're probably better off with an SSD to run it off. And we're at 97%. And we're going to verify it. It shouldn't take long to verify. Um, I think there is some config files we can change and play with. Um, some of the servers don't actually bring up a window and tell you what's happening, so it just runs in the background. And it says it's fully installed, so we don't need this anymore. Press X and then it'll log itself out. And then we want to go to the folder you made. As you can see, there's a lot of files in here, but we want to go to Steam Apps. Then we want to go to common. Now you have two choices here. You can leave this folder here or you can take it out and put it on your, the desktop. With it being a new game, I suggest you copy it 
and paste it on your desktop so if there is an update and you do update it it won't break your original files just after the update and won't break your save but anyway we're just going to go in here and we're just going to have a look at some settings so we've got server setting ink so you want to edit that and it should pop up like that we've got your server name So we'll call that Manta, you've got your server password if you want to do that, and then you've got your slots. Um, your internet should be able to handle at least 8 players, so I'll probably change that down to 8, I'll leave it at 16, it's up to you. And then you've got other things in game password, your admin, your default message of the day. So you can type here, welcome to server, welcome to server, and all that. And then you've got your save file directory, and this is the location of your save, just in case you're moving about. Um, other settings are in-game hour settings, which I've never messed with. You've got a diff difficulty level, and there's a ton of other settings here to play with. Now that's all done. We can save that. We can close that. And then to start the server, all you do is click start server.bat this will pop up then you'll get your windows firewall notification so you need to click allow get a load of dodgy text this we're all good to go so you want to go in the game i'm going to click start game uh picky player oh single player go on multiplayer and then we want There it is. So as you can see, there's a password on it for some strange reason. So you click on your character, you click multiplayer, and then you click on the left here, dedicated server. And then at the bottom, you type whatever you call your server. And as you can see, there it is. Manta, and there's a password on it for some strange reason. A PVE, zero, 16 players, normal, and day. And that is how you set up a, I forgot what game we're playing. <laughs>